Let's take a closer look at this Graviton 12 pen set that I've been playing with lately. Hello wonderful people! This set of water-soluble graphites was made by Derwent. The Graviton are also available as water-soluble pencils and I was so intrigued by it that I got myself a set of these pen ones. In the past I have tried other water-soluble graphites and enjoyed them a lot, for studies and sketching. So this handy set was something my brain wanted to have. Now that I've been using it for a while, I want to share my findings in this thorough review. Let's first take a look at the box. The paints come in a white plastic palette, which looks very handy. Inside are 12 half pens filled with color, a little sponge and a water brush. It also comes with a vellum sheet with printed on swatches. I decided to make swatches myself on cold press paper and include the piece on the back of the vellum. That way I can see how the colors actually look like on the paper I use, while I kept the information from the vellum piece too. A little tip on the side. When gluing vellum, it's better to use double-sided tape or these glue roller thingies so the glue is not visible through the vellum. A liquid glue sadly leaves ugly visible spots. I also noticed that the printed on swatches look different from the ones I made using the actual paints. Let's now take a look at the water brush. I'm personally not a fan of water brushes because I can get them to work like I want. The water either flows too much or not at all. This one seems to be the one, one of the drier ones. With some pressure on the barrel, you can increase the flow if you need. The brush is small and a bit too short for my hands to be held comfortably. You also can't post the cap on the back, so you can't extend it. In the palette itself, it only fits when it's taken apart. Thankfully, there's a stopper so you can store a filled brush safe even when the brush part is not attached. It won't leak or dry out even after months. I ex accidentally tried. So if you use water tank brushes on a regular basis, this might be one you want to work with. But as mentioned, I can't get them to work for myself and I prefer the water control of traditional brushes that I used to do the rest of the tests with. The 12 half pens are in two pen trays that can be removed, probably to be able to clean the palette. They won't fall out on their own though. The sponge can be removed too, but the free space won't fit another row of half pens. Regular half pens don't fit in the trays too, but if you remove the trays, you can fit four full pens instead. The brush part does not fit full pens in a row, but you can add three white knight sized pens, which are a little shorter than regular full pens, and some half pens in there. If you want to add more colors or exchange the ones from the palette for a custom setup. Personally, I like the case, but I would have gone without the brush and extra space for paints instead, or just a smaller case for the 12 half pens. It would be more handy as that I don't use water brushes anyway. Now we get to the good stuff, the paints itself. With the graphite and Derwent created a set of water soluble graphite that clearly has some pigment added to it. Derwent does not give any information on the pigments used or any of their product. I contacted them and this was basically the response that they will not give out any information. So we have to guess what's in there. Derwent says that all colors are light fast and vegan though. We have to believe that they're vegan, but I will test them for light fastness for sure and add them to the watercolor database, just so we all can enjoy the pretty swatches. Before we go deep into the topic, here are the 12 colors that are included in the set. Autumn Brown, Russet, Meadow, Green Grey, Slate Green, Ocean Blue, Steel Blue, Dark Indigo, Aubergine, I hope this is how it's pronounced in English, Juniper, Port, Graphite Grey. The graphite and pens go well together with the graphite and pencils, which are water soluble too. So now that we don't know which pigments are included, let's take a look at the color range. In the set you'll have two reddish colors, one orange brown, one yellow green, actually reminds me of green gold, PY129, with added graphite, one green, three blues, one purple, and one pure graphite, as Edison seems. The palette is very blue leaning and all colors are muted. The swatches that are printed on the vellum as well as on the box look much lighter than the colors actually are. In the scanned swatches in the video you can see how the colors actually look on paper. In the swatches you can also see how nicely the graphite is granulating and the effect it gives. 
That is something that spoke to me a lot. Graphite also gives the paints an almost sparkly finish once they dried. The paintings and swatches look like covered in very fine glitter when tilted in the light. The soft light during recording didn't show it there, but it's very noticeable in real life. The painting will not have a matte finish when you use these. Of course, I did not only swatch them, but also tested them for the usual. When it comes to transparency, they all leave a visible haze on the black and show that they are not fully transparent. The paints do okay with glazing though. When work a lot, they can lift the lower layer though, as all the colors do lift. Some pigments leave a stain on the paper though. As the event suggests erasing as a form of creating highlights on the graphitans, I try that too. And indeed, they do erase. Mostly. Autumn brown and meadow are probably the ones that are hardest to erase, because the pigments leaves the paper visibly stained. And in most cases, lifting is the technique that removes more of the pigment and is nicer on the paper than erasing is. So in case you have to correct something, try lifting the paint rather than erasing it. By the way, if you happen to rub it, it will smudge after drying. So you might treat the finished piece like graphite drying and be a bit careful. A test that was fun and which I enjoyed a lot is the dispersion. All colors moved nicely in the water. Autumn brown was very quick, but others too did spread nicely, although a bit slower. The movement in water increased the look of granulation and it created neat effects that I like a lot. The paint in the pans did get a bit mushy when it was soaked with the water for a while. As always, I also created a mixing chart of all the colors. It's muted, like a stormy day at sea. There shows the domination of blues and purples on the palette and how close some of the colors actually are to one another. A possible primary triad could be an autumn brown for a red, Meadow for yellow and the ocean blue. They indeed mix well into an orange brown, muted green and muted purple, which looks very similar to russet, slate green and dark indigo. The limited palette is of course something you must be willing to paint with, and the muted colors are not as versatile as the palette could be. But choosing the set, I was aware of that, and you should be too. It's definitely not the one and only set someone should have to use, as you will not be able to create bright colors with it and have just a limited range of mixable colors available. But it's a fun set. I liked a lot how the paints behaved on paper, the flow and the muted colors. I feel very connected to this palette for some reason, but also struggle to use it a little. Although the colors are very muted, most of them aren't very strong in tinting strength, and it needed lots of layers to create darks, and I wasn't able to go as dark as I wanted in some areas of this painting. By the way, this painting is painted on hard pressed paper, where the beautiful granulation is still visible. The swatches are made on cold pressed paper, where the granulation is visible even more. I did use the paints on cold pressed paper on stream 2, just to see and check and explore it more. And here comes the problem I've had with this review. I like this paint so much, but I can't make them work for me, and that was frustrating. At least not in the sense that I like the results myself. I feel like it's too difficult to create values, as all colors are so similar, and only Aubergine was creating nice darks. During the painting process, I felt like I was missing something constantly, and I guess that the set will shine most when used in combination with pencils or maybe even brighter watercolors, or even darker ones. It's for sure something I will keep in mind and will try out. After using it for weeks, I'm left with a mixed feeling, which I, by the way, did not have with other water soluble graphites and charcoals I've used and reviewed in the past. On the one hand, I like them so much. I love the muted colors, the granulation and the looks, but I'm just frustrated by, the, by them during the process. I'm sure others will feel different about them, but I want to be honest and just tell you how it is. As mentioned, they will probably shine in combination with other products that will make up for the missing darks, and then these can shine indeed. Did you ever encounter this? Have you ever felt the same about supplies? Let me know in the comments, as I wonder if this is a rather rare feeling or something that just happens, where you like something but you can't make it work. Just a weird feeling too. If you enjoyed this video so far, leave a like for Dante, my wonderful companion in life, who did a sniff test and approved me testing the supplies in the first place. Scans and a written review will be available on my blog, lanagosart.com. I will also put scans to the Kofi gallery, where you can find lots of mixing charts from my tests all in one place. A small tip is appreciated to support the channel and the watercolor database on colors.com. 
Soon, all these swatches will be available in the database as well and will be tested for light fasteners. The results will be there next year though. Sorry, but testing takes time. Until then, I have some more reviews for you and other art-related stuff. Some of it is actually pretty exciting, if I may say so myself. Have a wonderful and creative day, everyone. I hope to see you soon. Bye!